hypnosis. Recognition. Psychokinesis. When ESP occurs in everyday life, it usually occurs in what we call an altered state of consciousness, such as hypnosis, dreams, or relaxation states. I've actually had an interest in dreams all my life, for as long as I could remember. And I was working with Kent State University when I got a request from Maimonides Medical Center's director of psychiatry, Montague Allman, asking if I would be interested in running their newly founded dream research laboratory. Both Dr. Ullman and I were members of the Parapsychological Association. Dr. Ullman was a psychiatrist, and he had many patients who seemed to pick up on material from his personal life and incorporated those into their dreams that they'd report to him. He was wondering how this could ever be tested out experimentally, and then the work at the University of Chicago indicated that when rapid eye movement sleep occurs and when people awaken during rapid eye movement sleep, they usually report a dream. So he said, well, why can't we get people to report a dream about, let's say, a uh, picture in a sealed envelope. And he called upon the most prominent medium of the 20th century, Eileen Garrett, and they had a very, very simple setup where she simply tried to dream about a picture that somebody had put in a sealed envelope at a desk in an office, and somebody woke her up in the middle of the night and she reported a very vivid dream about a chariot race, white horses versus black horses. She says, you know, this is very much like the novel Ben-Hur, and a movie has just come out about Ben-Hur, and I'm eager to see it. Well, indeed, the photograph in the sealed envelope was a glossy still from the movie Ben-Hur. So we did build a soundproof room with a comfortable bed, and we did buy an electroencephalograph machine so that electrodes could be glued to a person's head whenever the rapid eye movement started, we would know that. And after about five or 10 minutes of rapid eye movements, we would take a microphone and say, what's been going through your mind? And almost always the person would report a dream. Michael, wake up. Um, can you tell me what's been going through your mind now? Yeah, I was, I was at a circus and was laughing at a clown in a big red suit. He was making me laugh, he was very jolly. Oh, it was a holiday, you get Christmas or the 4th of July. The target picture was a scene in Honolulu of Santa Claus during a Christmas party on the beach. The dream report from the sleeping subject mentioned a circus and a clown in a big red suit, therefore showing some correspondence with the festive atmosphere of the uh, Christmas beach party. Finally, the subject does specifically mention Christmas, therefore adding an additional correspondence to this particular picture. One psychologist in a different room or even in a different building was looking at a picture which was in a sealed envelope. And this had been selected simply by chance. When rather rapid eye movement started, there was a buzzer and he would redouble or she would redouble her efforts to look at that picture, trying to transmit it to the sleeping subject. And once the sleeping dreamer was awakened, the dreamer would relate the dream. This was tape recorded and sent to a team of judges. And they would try to match the one night with the set of dreams, there were usually eight nights or 10 nights, and by chance you'd get one match correct by coincidence. 
But we were coming up with five or six direct matches. Well, that's way beyond what you'd expect by the laws of chance. At Maimonides, we actually did nine what you would call formal experimental studies. And we did a couple of pilot studies, the most notable study being a study due to the Grateful Dead when they played Six Night at the Porchester Theater. Jerry Garcia and I were friends, and he suggested, why don't we try to do a telepathy experiment and have one of the people in your laboratory try to pick up something that goes on at the concert. After about one hour of music, when everybody was in an altered state of consciousness of one form or another, the people in the audience would read the instructions, you are about to participate in a telepathy experiment. You are going to see a picture. Try to transmit the contents of this picture to Mr. Besant. Mr. Besant was at the laboratory and he was awakened whenever there was rapid eye movement activity and we got the night of dreams. The dreams and the pictures were matched. It was not a very highly significant result, but that study has been republished more often than any of our formal experimental studies. We did a very notable study with a medical student who claimed to be able to leave his body while he was asleep. In the sleep laboratory, we built a little shelf, and before he went to sleep, I would have somebody throw the dice and get a number, and then the number would direct me to an envelope, and then I would take the envelope and I would open it up and dump the picture into the tray which was on the ledge. And then he would try to go out of his body and look at the picture. He said, I've just been out of my body. And sure enough, the EEGs showed a very, very strange pattern, a very, very slow alpha waves, which you usually don't get while you're dreaming. And he said, and I saw a picture of a sunset. Well, the picture was indeed memories of a perfect sunset. So he got it. And then he couldn't come back for more research because he had to go back to medical school. If I were to summarize the net effects of our work, I would simply say, don't rush to judgment because there's a great deal about this world that we don't know.